Hey guys, today we are going to render a beautiful Hawaiian girl and we're also going to take a look at Prima watercolor confections in tropicals. Keep watching! Guys, today we are going to do a watercolor illustration to test out these Prima Marketing Tropical Watercolor Confections. And the first thing I did was I sketched this beautiful Hawaiian girl in my Mossery sketchbook. So you guys can check out that review if you're interested in the paper. First thing I'm going to do um, after I allowed the ink, which was a Sailor Mitsuo Ida pen, you can find a link to that in the description below. After I allowed it to dry overnight, I'm going to erase it and I'm just using a soft white vinyl eraser. This happens to be a Creative Mark white stroke. So there's your sample and I'll go ahead and do the rest off camera. The cool thing about the white stroke is it pretty much balls up all of its eraser shavings for you. So if you don't happen to own a drafting brush, this is a handy, neat little eraser that you can get through Jerry's Artorama. This is the Creative Mark white stroke, by the way. And I kind of discovered this. I usually use a mono white vinyl, vinyl eraser or a Pentel High Polymer white vinyl eraser. But when I was doing a lot of erasing to remove the pencils from my Cicada Summer Pages, this came highly recommended. And it is a nice soft white vinyl eraser that won't damage your inks. So we have erased the inks from this. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove it from the sketchbook because we're gonna be using a lot of water with this and I don't want too much additional buckling and kipping. So next up, we're going to secure it to this masonite board. This is actually the back of a frame, but you can also use chipboard, say from a used up sketchbook or watercolor pad. And I kind of want to be strategic with how I secure this because anywhere I secure it, it's going to leave a white mark or a white line. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do down the sides. Now that can cause a problem because we just ripped this out of a sketchbook. So I'm actually going to take this over to my paper cutter and go ahead and remove that perforation. All right, so next step is we're going to tape this down on two sides. The most secure way would be to tape it down on all four sides and actually stretch it. But that is a lot of effort and it isn't necessary for something as little as this. But if you're looking for a good stretching tutorial, head on over to NattoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot blogspot dot com and you'll find a number of stretching tutorials of various types in my Watercolor Basics hub page. And just a reminder, I'm doing this field test as part of that series and also to celebrate World Watercolor Month, which is the month of July. So if you enjoy this video, please do make sure you share it with a friend or a loved one who could benefit from it. Maybe someone who enjoys watercolor or um, would like to learn how to watercolor and make sure you share it on your social networks with the hashtag World Watercolor Month. And if you're looking for more watercolor goodness, head on over to my watercolor webcomic, 7inchcara at 7inchcara.com and 7inchcara.tumblr.com, whichever one you prefer. And if you can't stand a uh, cliffhanger, you can get all caught up with all the chapters that are available in print by ordering a copy of volume one. And you can find a link to that down below. So enough with the sales pitch, I know. We have our illustration secured. Move this over to the side. These are our Primo Marketing Tropical Confections. I ordered this on Amazon for around $14 and I have an, um, a unboxing and swatching for you guys. And the, this little palette has a tendency of getting stuck in one of the corners, which is like my big complaint. Sometimes I struggle with it for a long time, but there you go. We get 12 little colors in a beautiful little palette. Honestly, the palette itself is worth the cost of admission. So I'm gonna go get a cup of clean water and we can go ahead and get started. All right, so I have my cup of clean water. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the color I want to use as my background color. 
And I kind of think I want to use that gorgeous green and that way I can focus, mm, maybe I want to use that green as her, you know what, yeah. I'm gonna use the green as her shirt, but I'm gonna activate the blue and I'm also going to activate this sort of yellow ochre color as well as this warm brown over here and then just a little bit of this pink shred. And I'm going to, I don't have an eyedropper, and I do have a cat who is super duper in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a larger mop. And see, normally I would work with an eyedropper. And I recommend you work with an eyedropper if you have one. And they're pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon. You can check my description, in fact, and I'll link you to the ones I normally use. It just... They're so far away, they're in the other room. So far. So the first thing I'm gonna do. Already I'm making a mess. One of my friends <laughs> says she can't stand seeing a dirty palette and I'm kinda like, oh well, mine is super gross. <laughs> okay I just won't post pictures of my watercolor palette and no one will have to see it hers is so clean though anyway I am going to go ahead and apply this sort of cerulean blue color to the background and I kind of want to do a gradiated wash and that means the color is going to be darker on one side of the paper than the other. It's okay, I guess, if I get a little in her hair. And it's raining right now, so this is going to take 60 years to dry. And that is a shame, because I was really hoping I could get this whole review knocked out before tomorrow, because tomorrow I leave for Anime Expo. Uh, a friend is generously splitting her table and I am staying at another friend's house who's also splitting with us. So that is the only reason I can afford to go. So I get to stay at someone's house and the table was split. Okay, so I'm going to use a thirsty brush To absorb any excess water. Then I'm going to prop this up. I'm going to use that white stroke we just had. I'm going to mix a little more blue in. And then I'm going to start at the top. Already got a resist there, probably from. So your hands produce oils. I know you probably know that, but it might be something you don't think about and it can cause a resist. And I guess that happened this morning. Just that out with a little bit of water because it wasn't blending evenly. And the blue they provide us with is not like a clear cerulean. It's actually a bit, a bit gray, a bit chalky. At least on the mossery paper. And your paper can make a big difference. On the swatch paper, actually a little more vibrant okay we're gonna let this dry a bit because there is a lot of water in the atmosphere right now because it's raining as well as a lot of water on our page maybe try to cover up that spot and blend it a little bit better and then since I'm in here I'll go ahead and try to delicately do the shadow on her eyes. All right, now to let that dry. And just as quickly as the rain started, it stopped leaving a beautiful golden afternoon. So what I'm gonna try to do, this is still damp, but as you can see, there's like some uneven, pigmentation. So what I'm going to try to do now that it's not raining is I'm going to try and do 
another layer and maybe redo the wash. And if that doesn't work, I'm just going to move on because it is a combination of the paper, which is not really watercolor paper. It's a mixed media paper, I think. Uh, the Mossery sketchbook is not marketed as a watercolor sketchbook. I don't even know if it's marketed as a mixed media sketchbook, but it can tolerate a lot of mixed media uh, applications. So this is also sort of my watercolor test for the Mossery. And I know it's not good to test two products at one time because there can be too many variables. Um, but really, I'm looking for specific things from both. And I have done some preliminary tests with both as well. So I'm moderately familiar with both products. So I think I will be able to tell when it's one shortcoming and not the other. And I think that weird streaky drawing was a combination of the rainy weather outside and, well, formerly rainy weather outside, and uh, the Mossery paper, just not truly being a watercolor paper. Okay, so I think we have a fairly even wash. I'm gonna go back into that blue one last time. Another part of the problem is I just can't get that blue dark enough. Also, this paper is kipping up, which is not surprising. Um, but that is why I removed it from the Mossery notebook and why I sort of supported it. Alright. So it just seems like on this paper we're just not going to get very intense color out of the Prima. And to sort of prove my point, I'm actually going to grab a different watercolor paper. I don't want to waste anything too nice, but I do want something with a cotton rag, so something decent. So we're going to use these pre-torn Fabriano cards. I used to use those for a lot of my field tests, but I think they are cotton. And we're just going to move this over a bit. Going to, oh, I grabbed like two, two three sheets. We do not need all that. It'd be a waste. On camera, that's our blue. That's our blue, more saturated. So it does actually go down more saturated on nicer papers than the Mossery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I work on this, I'm going to swatch over here so we can have some comparison. And that way maybe we can be a little fairer to these Prima paints. All right, guys. So I guess it is still pretty humid outside today because this is taking a while to dry. So I'm actually going to start mixing up her skin color. We're going to do that by carrying over some water. And I'm trying to, um, normally you guys see me working with a daisy palette because I end up with too many colors or I need to mix too much paint to sort of do it on the fly. But since this is a field test, I thought using exactly the palette I've been given as much as possible uh, might be the way to go. So we're going to start, we want a darker skin tone. So we're going to start with some yellow ochre and grab some of that brown, sort of like a burnt sienna. And then we want to grab some of that red. Yeah, that might be right. And this is damp and cool to the touch, but I'm a fool and I'll just go on and go ahead and get, st oh wow, that is like super concentrated. I guess that's, that's cool, that's fine. We'll work with it. It is, uh, so I was doing a demonstration with hot press paper earlier today and everything I put on the hot press was very faded, very muted. So I was, I guess I mixed this color assuming it would behave like my hot press did on a subconscious level. Like, of course I 
I know I am switching paints and paper because I was using my self-assembled watercolor palette rather than the Prima palette. But those colors seemed to mix pretty well, actually. Be interested in seeing how this looks when it dries. This is so much more saturated than that blue. Oh, I think I see what happened. See, this is more the color I thought I was going to get. And I wish, I wish uh, the lighter color had been on her face. Just because um, I like to start lighter, especially with faces, so I can build up color. So I'm just going to have to be kind of careful and light-handed. Although, I mean, these colors mixed well. Go ahead, like I said, and do a swatch. It's actually less saturated now on the cotton rag than it is on her skin. I, I kind of like it on her skin like that. I hope, I hope it dries a little more subdued because it is very saturated right now. Um, but we'll find out. All right, so her skin is damp, but not, see it's not shiny or anything like that. Now, I don't necessarily want to do another layer on her skin while it's damp like that. That can be kind of bad news. So I was sort of thinking, and I realized that something I really do want to do is I want to do maybe some like tropical leaves in the background. So I am activating off screen this darkest green, and that way I can use the brighter green on her um, on her clothing, or at least some of it. So we've got our our green, and I'm just going to paint really big leaf shapes. Well, I'm actually going to kind of vary them to an extent, make them interesting. And I'm pretty much painting directly from the palette. I might also add in some extra paint. I don't want it to leave lines if possible. I want to get like a nice smooth So we're painting wet over dry and then wet into wet so that we're not going to get too many transition lines. I don't mind getting sort of that blur effect. On paper, this is a really nice green. So it's sort of overly built up over there. I'm going to build it up a bit more over here. Just put my hand in some paint. Now, not all of the Prima palette collections are going to be $14. I don't even know, honestly, if Tropical is still $14. Um, I think like two of the sets, Tropical and like a basic kind of color set, like a primary kind of set, but it was named something twee and hard to remember. Um, I think those were available for $14. But like if you're interested in like their decadent pies, which is like a bunch of browns and some golds and a silver, and I don't necessarily know why, other than for testing purposes, you would be interested in those because Fine Tech makes some of the best um, metallic watercolors I have encountered and you'd be paying about the same price for the Fine Tech ones. And Kuratake makes some pretty decent ones for um, slightly less, but you get a lot more paint, but it doesn't perform as well, that sort of deal. So like, I don't know. I didn't really understand why Prima made watercolors to begin with, because I tested their alcohol markers actually a couple years ago. Actually, I kind of like that overlap. Um, 
and I really did not like them. And in fact, I don't even know if that video ended up on the channel and then I ended up giving those to somebody else to use. Turn it so I can do some leaves on the other side. And then I might, after that dries, I might go in and do like another layer of leaves on top of those leaves. But anyway, I really, really did not like their alcohol markers. Not only did they not bring anything new at all to the table, and I'm, we're kind of oversaturated when it comes to alcohol markers, um, uh, like in terms of like choice and availability. Um, so I don't normally like to give too much attention to uh, those sort of brands anymore. I used to review a lot of them over on the blog. Um, and that was exhausting because it was just like bullet tip marker after bullet tip marker after bullet tip marker. Just like not anything or exciting or innovative. Just the same product over and over again. Watercolors, even to me, watercolors have more variation. They also, there's like a lot of variables that can affect the performance of watercolors. So um, they are a little more enjoyable, but they're also equally time consuming. Reviewing alcohol markers is time consuming for me because I like to draw custom illustrations for each test. I could print and use my line art, but you know, I just gotta be extra, I guess. Okay, I think I got this pretty good so far. And note, I'm just like freehanding it. It's something that always kind of bothered me with a lot of stampers, or at least on YouTube, the ones who get sent their stamps to demo, is like they'll have stamps for like stars and for leaves and for like just things that are like super basic that they could draw themselves and it would be less effort. And it's just like, why are you telling people to buy these things that they could? So anyway, I'm seeing a lot less of that now and I'm seeing a lot more of like, here's a super basic way to draw this thing, which I appreciate because I hate seeing people spend their money on like really dumb stuff like star stamps when you could just draw your own stars. Um, if it's like a super decorative star stamp with like the die included, I can kind of understand that. But like some of the stuff they were pushing two years ago, I was just like, who has money for this? Like, if you have money for this, you could be commissioning somebody to do some custom art for you that you would treasure and it would look awesome, but you're not. I don't get it. So, um, I'm kind of glad to see that that has changed over. So, I'm going to let this layer of green dry. I'm actually really pleased with, um, I mean, it's got like kind of a modeled effect. In fact, in fact, I need to go ahead and do my swatch over here. Ooh. It does have kind of a mottled effect, but I think that might be the Mossery paper, although looking at my little swatch over here, maybe not. Um, but that can be cool too. Like Daniel Smith, uh, some of their, their, their earth pigments, some of their rock-based pigments do this like really cool granulation color chromatography thing, which is cool. It just helps to know if the watercolor is going to do that so you can plan around it, which is why we do tests and why we do swatches and why we watch other people's videos. All right, so this paper is still damp, but it is, um, it, you could paint over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by doing another layer of leaves. And like I talk about in my other watercolor tutorials, you want each successive layer to cover less than the layer before. So we're going to paint in smaller leaves now, smaller leaf shapes. And if some of them do go outside of the bounds of the prior painted leaves, that's fine. You just don't want to cover more space with your new leaves than you did with your prior layer of leaves, unless that's your actu your direct uh, intention. Unless you're like, oh, I didn't care for how this prior layer turned out, let me fix this. Otherwise, it's gonna start to look confused and muddy. And this is sort of one of the ways I've found to help maintain and build up contrast. And 
And so far, other than that blue, and I think the problem is the paper, not the blue itself. These colors are a little chalky, but not bad. Um, often inexpensive watercolor brands will add uh, like chalk or talc um, or gypsum as like optical brighteners. And uh, it makes it look bright and vibrant in the palette. And it makes it look bright and vibrant if you're just doing one layer. But if you're doing multiple layers, um, it really becomes a problem and I've seen some people use those sort of paints like they would gouache and that's sort of like a your mileage will vary because um, sometimes that works out really well and then sometimes it can be really difficult to do and if you're painting on a high humidity day it would just be I mean your paints are even if you're using high quality paints that don't have don't utilize a lot of optical brighteners um, you on a high humidity day your paints can still get muddy and chalky so I would just avoid intentionally chalky paints especially on rainy days And I do have many recommendations for more affordable paints over on the blog. It's one of the reasons why I'm reviewing these is I wanted to see if these would be a good pick. And, um, you know, short answer so far, I'm pretty satisfied with them. But I really, if there's going to be problems that come up, I do want them to come up as soon as possible. So that is our second layer of leaves. Going to let those dry and then hopefully I can go back into the skin. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start in on the next layer. And I think what I'm gonna do is I think I might try to keep my details, because these colors are so saturated, I think I might try to keep my details kind of limited and maybe even just do limited blending, especially since I'm not really sure if the Mossery paper can really handle blending. Blocking in shadow for half her face. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all the areas that are going to be in complete shadow. Trying to be as delicate as possible. And then I'm going to just absorb some of this excess water, disperse it. And I'm going to blend out on her cheek a little bit with a thirsty brush because the transition is a little harsher than I would have liked. And then I'm gonna let that dry. But so far, her color is really nice. All right, guys, so that has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in now with the yellow ochre. And I'm going to do a first layer. I want her to have sort of golden brown eyes or, you know, for her eyes to have some shade effect to them. I'm also going to swatch that yellow ochre. And I'm also going to use a bit of that sort of red, um, it's like a pinkish red, really. I'm actually going to go ahead and just paint the inside of her mouth with that as well. And 
I'm going to do the blush on her cheeks. And I am going to kind of diffuse that with a little bit of clean water. What's in? Oh, we do have a purple. Never mind, I can actually mix a purple for skin shading if I want to. I was thinking that's strange that I can't do that. And anywhere where skin goes over skin, I am just adding a little bit of red influence. Sort of give a liveliness. As well as to the underside of her nose and the inside of her ear. Blend that out a little bit more. All right. And I kind of actually, instead of going with that beautiful green that I originally, let me show you guys, this green, it's a beautiful color. Um, I, I should have just used it for the background and then did that on top of it, I think. But I have this gorgeous gold color that might actually pop a little bit better. But I think what I want to do is I think I want to paint her flowers first and then decide on her outfit colors. Now we don't actually have a black in this set or anything really approaching a black, but we can kind of actually zoom out for you guys. We can actually kind of mix our own, if you know a little bit of color theory, and are willing to swatch. So we're gonna need a fair amount of that black. I probably should have mixed it in the next one over because these little palettes aren't particularly sturdy. But we're going to use some of that purple, which I posit is a dioxin purple, and a little bit of that blue, which is sort of an indigo blue, and then some of this brown. And that's going to make a dark brown, of course. Yes, a dark brown. So we need more purple. And it's all just about fiddling with the colors until you find the right one. We might even need a green in there. And when painting hair, I try to let the brush do a lot of the work for me. So I like using a round. And I am already leaving in white highlights. And I just realized those are areas that should be the same color as her skin. So I need to go back in later and paint in her skin where I missed it. So you're gonna, especially if you're doing say comics, you're gonna find lots of areas that you missed on the first or even the second pass as you start to block in all your colors. Have a little bit too much paint on the brush so it makes it blobby and hard to use. And then I'm also going to use a thirsty brush to absorb areas where it's pulled a bit much. So we've got our base color on the hair and then I'm gonna go back in and fill in those areas on the skin that I missed. And hit this area with another layer of color as well as this area back here. And I'm gonna let that dry. Right, so I do want to go ahead and do another layer on the skin. And I'm going to do a dual wield. Grab a brush, do a little bit of light blending, move some of this color around. A 
little concerned with some of what's going on on our face right now. But, you know, it's one of those things that we have to kind of wait and see. If we try to fix it too much now, we can end up making it a lot worse than it is. So I'm going to step away from that and come back to it in a moment. But I'm also going to try and work this hair color a little darker. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that with the colors provided in this set. We'll see. I'm certainly not expecting a true black. Alright, that might be a little better. We'll find out after the skin dries. Alright, so her skin isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but this tells me I need to mix that color darker if I can. Um, because there really just isn't much difference in the color and we're also getting some strange blooming and pooling. But I'm going to go ahead and continue working on her hair while I decide how I want to darken up her skin tone. See, the problem is, is that's a pretty good saturation of that brown. That brown can get a little darker, but really not a whole lot. And I don't want to add a whole lot more red, and I certainly don't want to add more yellow ochre. Now might actually be a good time to mix up the color I'm going to use to shadow her skin, or do the shadows on her skin rather. Also, want to start doing some shadow on her eyes. And I guess I'll start mixing up the shadow color for her skin. So I'll actually zoom out a little bit for you guys so you can see what I'm mixing. And I'm going to do a little bit of this dioxin violet, which is a fairly dark color dioxin purple add some of that red and then let's see let's see how that looks we need more red I think that's good color all right so we're gonna let the hair dry and um, maybe then we can go ahead and do the shading on the skin all right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry. We're gonna start applying this shadow color we mixed. Hopefully it won't lift too much paint off the paper. And I'm gonna do limited shading on her since I seem to be having some trouble with either the paper or the paints coming up off the page and so when that starts to happen there's a few reasons for that unfortunately all of the reasons for that are things that happen today one I'm working on a cheap paper two it rained today so the humidity is high and three I'm working with paints that may not necessarily be artist grade. In fact, that's what we're trying to find out today. Now, usually the cheap paper wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the high humidity. But high humidity can make it difficult to work with 
nice paints, even on um, decent paper, if it's really wet outside. All right, so we're going to let this layer dry and see how that turned out. All right, so it's not, it's not quite what I hoped it would be. So I'm going to stop messing with it because that tends to be the quickest route to just ruin something is when you mess with it too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on some of the flowers instead. So I've got that magenta color and I'm going to start with the flowers in her hair her flower crown. Interesting. Uh, it seems like the magenta is sort of pulling some of the blue from the background. Alright, so I'm going to step away and give that a chance to dry. The color goes down very vibrant, but then it dries kind of muted. Alright, so that has had a chance to dry. I'm actually going to switch brushes because this squirrel hair brush can be kind of frustrating. I'm just going to move on, move on over to a Kalinsky Sable, and Kalinsky Sable is a different type of squirrel, um, but a Kalinsky Sable brush about the same size. but this one does a little bit better of not getting like weird and floppy on me when it's both too wet and too dry, unlike the Blick Master Squirrel Brush, which I was using previously. Finally, gonna begin blocking in her eyebrows. I wanted to wait until the face was basically done. I might add some more blush to her face. Go ahead and add a little more blush. Oh, gotta be careful on this side. and work on her lips as well. And then sort of blend that out a little bit. And then we can start thinking about the colors for, I think I wanna go with that red cause this pink is just not as dark as I thought. So I'm gonna do the red for the bottom of the skirt. And then I'm gonna do that golden yellow for the shirt. And that should give some nice visual contrast. It's a shame I didn't get to use that nice tropical green. So I guess I could paint a design. I could, I could do it on top of the yellow. That might look good, except then I would do leaves and that might be kind of repetitive. We'll see. And I should also bring up that I haven't used every color that was available to me in this set. I used a lot of them, but not all. Oh, that's right, I was gonna do swatches. So we could see how the colors look on the nicer paper versus how they look 
on the painting itself. So that is about dry. I'm going to go ahead now with that yellow, which is a really nice sunny yellow. So she's got lots of nice warm hues on her. Make her pop from that cool hued background. Oh, that's a flower petal. I need to go back and paint that. shading technique and then we'll go ahead and swatch that yellow and then I need to let this dry all right guys so things have had a chance to dry I went in to try and fix that petal and uh, <laughs> I had some problems with that it wasn't fully dry the shirt wasn't fully dry so it started to leak um, but I did that off camera so I'm going to use a little bit of that purple to try and get the inside of her mouth a little darker so it looks a little more believable. Maybe also a little bit of indigo. And there's still an area on the shirt that's wet. Let me zoom in for you guys. And I'm going to switch over, trying to find a good smaller brush so I can start working on the lay. So I'm going to go a little darker with the yellow and I may have to use a little bit of scarlet red just to get the dark, the color dark enough but we'll start with this then off to the side I'll go ahead and prepare a little bit of yellow activate that scarlet and I'm going to do, while that's activating, I'll do another layer on the skirt. And you saw, maybe, you saw that, I don't know. If you're watching it on a big TV, you probably saw that. It, so my brush, being a synthetic, keeps flicking paint up into the yellow. I'm not all that concerned about it. Um, I'm going to do something with that yellow anyway, so it's not a big deal. Going to go back into her lips. Add some more red. Water that down a little bit. Add some more red on her cheeks. On her eyelids, underneath her eyebrows. that'll work out okay and actually be bold and try to darken up the hair over here because it's not quite as dark as on the other side and could probably benefit from a little more contrast regret doing this we'll find out so something and I can't tell if it's the mossery paper or if it is the paints I'm using but 
the paint is sort of displacing the color from underneath it like it would if it were an alcohol marker but these are watercolors and watercolors are supposed to layer so it's kind of annoying and I don't really know what's causing that unless because I was careful in how I applied it so it should not have disrupted the prior layer but it looks like maybe it did so uh, my concern is I guess the paper actually you know what we can test this out ourselves so over here on the swatch sheet I'm gonna go ahead put a swatch of brown make sure it's nice and and muted I'm not saturated sorry then some of the purple might as well I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna try applying the red over that and that way we'll find out whether or not it is the quality of the paper or the quality of the paints okay so I'm going to add just a little bit of scarlet oh too much scarlet let's try again just a little bit this time to make an orange mm -hmm. and that'll give us sort of our shadow at least and then while that dries I'm going to use that tropical green and I'm going to do a big leaf pattern on the skirt. So zoom in and before I forget here's our swatch of that green trying to make sure my leaf shapes are distinct from those in the background Although, color-wise, a lot of the vibrancy is lost. I need to go in now and do another layer on her eyebrows. And then, also using scarlet so I'll go ahead and swatch that for y'all and I'll show you that guys that in a minute we're going to do some um, hibiscus flowers and I'm freehanding them because I'm just a little bit crazy glutton for punishment just about done with that and then I want to use the fuchsia mixed with some of that very intense purple so just a little bit of that to get a darker shade of the fuchsia even darker than that get some shadow on these flowers all right so I think the only colors the only color that didn't get used at some point would be the green gold. You know what I can do? It's not quite the same, but something I can do about that. So first off, that's what it looks like on that paper. Very bright green. Mostly yellow influenced. We have her eyes. Might as well just add a little bit of green gold over that yellow ochre. And then we can also do a little bit of green gold on the print of her top just a little bit because it's very similar to the golden yellow they included and to the yellow ochre um, although those are kind of tropical colors 
something else we can do with the indigo is do one final round of leaves on top of what we have. here and there. It's particularly nice when it's a bit at odds with the other leaves on that layer. It's a little more realistic. Not that we're going for particularly realistic with this. I'm actually going to break out of the mold a little bit and do a few that don't quite line up. And once I'm done with this, I'm actually going to let it dry for a while. Step away, go do some other things, cook some dinner. And then I'm going to come back with some white gouache and add highlights. Now, the set did not include a white, which is perfectly fine because I pretty much never use the white paint that comes in watercolor sets it tends not to be very good um, and it tends to not be very opaque it's really I guess it would be more useful if you're trying to like change the opacity of another color you're already using so if you wanted to make an opaque um, if you wanted to make a pink and you wanted it to be more opaque than what you were going to get just by using a very light wash of a scarlet or a cadmium round or something like that then you could i guess use chinese white which is the color which is included in most of those paint sets that include a white or titanium white you know it's one of the two usually um i guess that is the true use for it because it is not really for adding white highlights or white details because it's usually just not opaque enough for that to be noticeable. So I don't normally bother with it when they include white paint in a set. What's interesting is that indigo is not really coming out as indigo as I thought it would be. All of these are just, I don't know, they're not bad necessarily, just not, they don't behave in any of the ways I would expect them to. It's almost like they don't really behave quite like other watercolors and certainly not like other artist grade watercolors do. Again though it could just be this paper and it sounds like I'm gonna have to go to all the trouble of doing a test on nicer paper than this. But that's also why I was doing those swatches to kind of see if the paper was the culprit or if the paints are at fault, at fault. So sort of going in now and painting in leaves where I feel like it might have benefited from more of them where I was maybe a little too light-handed. And the blue leaves look particularly nice when they sort of come up against the blue of the sky so you can sort of see them a little bit better. So I'm also painting some more like that in as well. All right, so I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back in a bit. All right guys, it has had a chance to dry. 
So I'm going to take a little bit of gouache, just bloop it right there. Zoom in. And we're gonna find a smaller brush. First thing I wanna do the reflections to her eyes. Let me zoom in for you guys. Then So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and helping me color this beautiful Hawaiian girl. I hope this has piqued your interest in Prima Marketing's watercolor confections, especially while they're on sale. You can check the description below for links to the different palettes and I'll also include a price at time of when this video is released, so please don't hold me to updating that every week. Um, to help you find the one that is priced correctly for you. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If there are other watercolors that you'd like to see me review, you can fill out a tutorial request form over on my blog, or you can jo join my Art Nerd community on Patreon and let me know over there. And you can find that at patreon.com slash natosoup. Um, if you enjoy watercolor, if you would like to learn more about watercolor, if you'd like to start watercoloring for yourself, please do head over to natosoup.blogspot.com as well for my watercolor basic series. It is a fantastic series that takes you from the very beginning of watercolor all the way to the finished comic page. And speaking of comics, if you enjoy comics, please read my comic, now a web comic, so you can find 7inch Kara at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com and you can find the whole volume for sale as well and you should check my description below for the link for that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. It was awesome hanging out with you guys. And if you enjoy this sort of content, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye!